Objective Truth. Let's get right to dick slapping, sword fighting, titty twisting. (laughs) I'm game. Let's do it. Welcome to the stiff truth, where the truth gets stiffer and sometimes the drinks do too. I'm Bob West. I'm here with the illustrious Scott Castelnova. He's joining us today with his fuzzy mic. (laughs) (laughs) How you doing, Scott? I am doing great, Bob. Fuzzy mic aside, it's okay. I've had I've had sharper, just more clarity, clearer focus in, in previous days, but I, I really can't complain. And I'm really excited to to bring the show a special time and day. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right now. Here we are. We are doing a weekday show. That's right, kids. A school night, the stiff truth on a school night. I don't know. I, I feel like we're being a little bit naughty and I'm really excited about that. How about you, bud? I do too. A little bit of uh evening drinking on a Tuesday. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh let's see. 645 mountain is where we're at right now. So oh, yeah. we haven't done, we haven't done time and temperature since like episode two. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it is like 37 degrees and forecasted for heavy snow tonight here in here in the Metro area. I'll tell you what, we're, we're a little bit ahead of you up here in the mountains, man. We've, um, we've already probably got about three or four inches on the ground. Uh, it's going to be negative, um, degrees tomorrow. And we're supposed to get like, you know, up to like seven to 10 inches or something like that. Hey, but whatever, dude, it's fucking February 1st. Here we are. Let's go. We haven't had snow like fucking all year, pretty much, dude. We, we, we need to like this, this, uh, this uh, global warming shit to calm down for a little bit, give us a little bit of seasons. I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real, especially it's been so long. We could all use seven to 10 inches. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Some of us, uh, Bob notably can take a lot more than I've seen him. He's uh, he's, he's a champ, uh, champ there. Uh, But Bob, let's just get right into some great conversation we have um, for everybody today. And uh, I think we definitely want to, I was upset hearing this. Um, they, they, um, you know, I'm not sure who these people are. I saw a couple of them on an interview here and I was like, who are these fucking clowns that get to judge whether or not by voting? They They're look mostly like- newspaper sports writers. Aha, no see, I knew it. I was like, I don't think these guys, cause I saw a couple, I was like, that doesn't seem like a, like a, like a, an old baseball player or anything like that. I was like, who the fuck are these guys? But baseball Hall of Fame um, ballots went in. What is it? Last week, beginning of last week, I want to say. I can't remember. I know we we started talking about it like early last week. Yeah, I think it was early last week when they announced this. And and I'm and I and I want to say it right out of the gate. Um, David Ortiz got it. He got it in there. I believe it was his first time on the ballot, and and good for him. You know, everybody needs a little bit of big poppy in their life, and uh, especially in the Hall of Fame. However, and I'm not sure where this rule came about again i really haven't looked two balls deep into it until recently but apparently you can be on the ballot like 10 years in a row but after that you're ineligible for life is that accurate i think that's accurate right you can never go back again yeah 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 so that was interesting to me because as everybody knows if you don't know yet you know baseball's american pastime you should probably check in on it if you want to be patriotic uh but no all kidding aside uh, some big players here, like Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens. Um, who else? There was a couple other I'm missing here. But I think those are the two most notable ones. But anyways, while you think about that, they were up for their, their final and last shot at this, and they got denied. So apparently Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are never going to be eligible to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. That upset me quite a bit. And again, it has nothing to do with David Ortiz getting in. He's an awesome player, well-deserved. But I believe the entire reason and the big taboo and black mark that these other guys have on them is that they're not just allegations. They were straight up busted doing performance-enhancing drugs at some point in time in their career. But I'm pretty sure David Ortiz was as well, um, at least it seems to be that way. And again, I, you have to fact check me, Bob. I don't know if I'm hundred percent right, but I know there was definitely allegations. And I think it's interesting that he get on at his first shot, c- cracked a home run. And, um, you know, our boy, Barry Bonds did not neither Roger Clemens. And I got issues with that. And we're definitely going to talk about it a little bit more, Bob, 
what are your thoughts in general about this, this big bag of horse shit that we saw happen last week with them? Well, I'm just, I'm looking over the list and, and you can get in uh, after 10 years. Cause I'm looking on this list of people that have gotten in like Jeff Bagwell got in in 2017. Um, so Tim it- Raines, Tim Raines played in the eighties. Let me ask you this, son, because I remember hearing this on multiple uh, reports last week. Is it 10 ballots that that and then it expires for you or something like that? Not 10 consecutive years, but apparently maybe maybe they weren't up for, um, you know, voting every single year. I don't know the kooky rules, but Ken Griffey Jr. went in in 2016 and it had been more than 10 years since he played. So, okay. There's got to be something to that. Uh, Stiffies, check us out here. Let us know a little knowledge. Drop some knowledge on us here and, and correct us. But from I my understanding, it up, but I'm sure it's baseball. So it's some convoluted nonsense of a rule. Exactly <laughs> my point here. And I think that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, Bob, I want to hear your opinion on it before before you get into this. Before you start, though, what a fucking cocktail. Am I right? Oh, huh? Am I right? Look at, look Let's at get that. one of these bad boys for the. Oh, my God, dude. I'm telling you what. This looks like a beautiful summer day and you're just like kicking back some some lovely ruby red grapefruit juice, but it's got a mean fucking kick to the balls with it. You know what I'm saying? It is before we get to the name, like let's it's it's vodka uh, mixed with SoCo right away. That's Girl, a what unique the drink. Fuck? Right? <laughs> yeah, right. But then you mix it with slow gin, right? And then you t- uh, fill it up with the orange juice. But then you top it off and let oh. the Galliano sit on oh top. My God. And let the Galliano do its work, please. Come on, get the fuck out of here, man. It's, but yes, it's an instant classic. Yeah, it, and and be honest, some people are probably listening to the ingredients there, and I kind of did the same thing initially. If you walk through it like you just spelled it out there, and you're like, yeah, so hold on, hold on, ride with me on this, okay? Hold on, you're like vodka and Soco. You're like, why? Why would you do that? Why, <laughs> it's so why would you weird, do that? right? Yeah, it's very weird. But when you throw in the element of orange juice and the SoCo's also got that fruity kind of element to it as well. And then the slow gin, honestly, I've never had a drink of slow gin by itself. I just think it looks very pretty. Maybe that's the only reason for it. I don't know. We should take a Uh, shot just so that we know the flavor. I think that's our homework for, for the next show. We're going to tell everybody what's what's up with the 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 slow gin liqueur and and what does it really taste like? Because all I really know right now is it's purple purplish but goddamn this is a good one i will say with the galliano on there and maybe the mixer of the orange juice it's uh and i'm gonna talk kind of in third person here it's it's a scotty favorite you know what i mean I, yeah i think it's an instant classic and mm. uh for those that we i think we've teased it long enough <clears throat> you know yeah this I mean, drink... i've got i've got blue balls over here and that's another great <laughs> trick by the way. this drink is a a slow comfortable screw against the wall Oh God, you know, and not even like in a lazy boy that you tip over. Cause that sounds pretty comfortable. You know what I mean? Just get it up against the wall, maybe throw the leg in a harness or something and hang that off the wall, you know, too. I don't know, but I'm sure we can make it pretty comfortable, but well, Hey, I'll tell obviously you. Obviously the name is eye catching. Right. But then when you <laughs> see that it's uh, basically a twist on a Harvey wall banger, we were all in from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Bob, I got to give you kudos on this one because you definitely pinpointed this drink, you know, as we, I don't even want to tell everybody, you know, how much time and effort and blood, sweat, and tears we go into, uh, and endure trying to find the drinks for our show, but it's at least two to six minutes at least. And there's, I get like, I get like paper cuts and burns from flipping the bartender uh, book. You know, it's, uh, it's rough, but you, uh, you really, uh, nailed it out of the park. You must've been, um, taking a shot in the ass with some steroids too, before you got into that. Oh, Hey, <laughs> well, I was, uh, yeah. typically, um, but it's not just that, you know, we also like usually have to go procure at least one sort of form of liqueur or alcohol for our drinks almost every week. Right. Wow. So, and that's why the, the bar gets to be as robust as our bars are right now. This uh, is but, true. You know, it is what it is. It's all for the show. Right. That's great shit. Anyways, Anything for the students. Absolutely. And I'm just going to recommend this again and again. If you can't already tell, uh, get out there and make yourself a slow, comfortable screw against the wall. It is breathtaking. Now, back to you, Bob. PEDs, great baseball players. What the fuck? So I'm looking at the list of these people that have been inducted in the Hall of Fame, and it, it just doesn't compare to the pedigree of Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds, right? Um, mm. 
And, and the Roger Clemens is, is really perplexing to me. Barry Bonds was accused and kind of ducking baseball for years uh, near the end of his career when he was like breaking records and smashing home runs. Roger Clemens got caught up with like one test one time, right? It's not like he was like just known for since the mid eighties when he was with Boston uh, for being this huge Reuter. So that's very strange that Roger Clemens didn't get in. I think some of the Roger Clemens is um, his reputation is a bit surly and could give a fuck less with reporters. And so I think since the majority of hall of fame uh, voters are those reporters, I think it was kind of easy for them to turn the other cheek towards Roger Clemens. Now, Barry Bonds is different. Uh, there's, there's, there's no negative stories about Barry Bonds out there. Like no one, no one dislikes Barry Bonds except for like maybe his, custom hat tailor that has to keep like letting out his hats <laughs> you know you know what's funny too like i can understand what you're saying about like the athlete the the man in the game you know roger clemens just a fantastic pitcher um you go to bonds though you look at like his rookie his rookie year his card and everything he's like a he's like a featherweight you know what i mean he's like super thin and then you look at like towards the end of his career he's like beyond a heavyweight he's he's ballooned like 150 pounds of muscle or something ridiculous like that i guess i could understand how you could make the case on how well i guess how he just went above and beyond and did whatever he did whatever he could do and whatever he needed to do to become an elite player to fucking crank home runs is that really a bad thing though uh, well you know? regardless of how many steroids he took right allegedly uh, or hgh allegedly um <laughs> <laughs> yeah you make it so risque when you throw the, that in there <laughs> his ability to mind fuck a pitcher into giving him what he wants was renowned and then his hand eye coordination to put the fat part of the bat on that ball at, at will especially in the last years of his 30s and just that he, he's the most intimidating sports presence i think i've ever seen in any sport in in his late 30s when he was at the uh, the batter box um like pitchers would freak out when he when he comes they they, they wouldn't even like th dare try to throw a pitch at him right they would just walk him half the time because they already knew if, if i throw a pitch this guy's going to put it off the wall or over the wall guaranteed if i give him a ball to hit so the 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 point i'm making is that ability to take a ball that's coming in the strike zone and just put it over the wall just because you're going to that's hall of fame no yep. one could do that that's some and hank aaron barry bonds babe ruth that's some elite company to be able to do that and there's no amount of muscles that's going to make you better at that quite yep. frankly you know what i mean you can hit the ball as hard as fucking possible. If you don't hit it in the right place, you're just going to hit some really amazing foul balls. You know what I mean? That's kind of where you're at there. So no, no, it was incredible. I'm so glad that I got to watch Barry Bonds really his whole career, but um, more specifically late in his career when, when he knew he couldn't run. So, so for these youngsters out there that don't know Barry Bonds, first off is Hank Aaron's like nephew. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. But then, uh, uh, Barry Bonds uh, started the league when he was like 19 or 20 years old as a phenom, a five tool guy, like a 10 time golden glove winner. The first half of his career, just running down everything, catching everything, stealing bases, getting the big hits, getting, getting consistent hits, you know, contact. So he hit for contact. He hit for average. He hit for power. He, he, he played defense like no other. I mean, this dude was a utility guy like, like maybe a Derek Jeter or Cal Ripken, but you know, on steroids, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had a little help. <laughs> Whatever the steroid allegations ever happened, Barry Bonds was already a first ballot Hall of Famer. So the fact that he's not in at all is very odd. The irony is during the steroid era, when Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, always made the front page of the sports section which these sports writers were, were totally capitalizing on that well, right we, they we could argue that and blackball these guys yeah we could argue that it boosted their career to another level that they wouldn't have probably seen with the steroid arrow that's the irony of it right there right same goes for baseball in general yeah yeah 100 i would say and we'll call the steroid era what like the 
mid to late eighties to like the mid to late nineties, somewhere in that time frame, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the late nineties, definitely yeah. the late nineties. Cause when you think 95 was when John Smoltz and Greg Maddox uh, and the Braves were in the world series. Right. So that's kind of taking it back. Um, so there wasn't much going on baseball wise. Yeah, uh, there just wasn't right. The Yankees weren't doing very good in the mid nineties. Like no one was doing very good. The guy started juicing a home run started going out of the park. Uh, Mark McGuire started it. Right. And then Sammy Sosa is like, well, fuck that. Right. And then it was in like 98, I think it was when uh, Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire had the every just game that they break nuts. the record. Yeah. Right? Well, it's, it's very similar to, I'm just switching gears slightly here, but I remember it was the same hysteria in the mid nineties when you had like the battle of who could put up the most points in uh, basketball at the time. And it was Shaquille O'Neal and David Robinson. They were like, you know, they put up like 60, 70 points a game, shit like that. It was just a time of like ultra crazy, ultra crazy sports performances. And I think baseball was trying to keep up, you know, and this is their way of keeping up because rightfully so. I, I don't know. I don't know if those guys in the NBA were pumping juice. Maybe they were, but you are a hundred percent right. Um, Revenue was down. Yeah. This was the time of Jordan. Let's just call that what it is. NFL was always king, but after the NFL, it wasn't even another sport. It was just Michael Jordan and whatever sport he was playing, right? Even if it was baseball. So Michael Jordan owned everything at that point. Baseball was falling off. They even bad. owned your mom. You know what I mean? Do you remember your mom and your mom and Jordan? They were getting down. Sosa and McGuire <laughs> saved baseball and then yeah. immediately got blackballed when they mm. got found out and baseball rolled right the fuck over on them, which is, it's a tragedy. It's, it's unfair. Well, uh, they yeah. deserve, they deserve credit for what they did. Um, they were not the only ones juicing. They were just the ones getting caught because they were the ones breaking records that baseball doesn't want broken. Ah, see, that's interesting too. And you're right, man. Now, again, no discredit and no takeaway from, I mean, we don't want to take any, anything away from David Ortiz and I'm not looking at stat sheets right now, but I'm going to go ahead out on a limb and say that Barry Bonds has better stats. Maybe not, maybe not around like all around or whatever, but, but a lot better stats, maybe, uh, individually versus David Ortiz. Just going to go ahead and say that. Oh, no, it's not even close, dude. Yeah, Barry, Barry Bonds had the career of like two David Ortiz's. Yeah, well, like Barry, Barry Bonds is he, he owns all the records. And I wouldn't uh, even I wouldn't have even thought to bring this up honestly if a couple of things kind of gave me a little bit of red flags where I was just thinking to myself, well, ah, that seems kind of fucked up. Now again, if it was blanket anybody with allegations that had a fabulous career that was really big in baseball just got blackballed. And, and, you know, whatever, just got blacklisted, uh, probably better to say, from even being in contesting or, you know, or even even being considered uh, for the uh, for the Hall of Fame. Great. That'd be great. But we know that's not the case. There's a lot of people that are in that have allegations of, of PEDs as well. Maybe they weren't caught red handed, hey so to speak. All I'm saying know. is the 27 Yankees with Babe Ruth and all that. Those guys are doing blow and drinking during the game. But now it's like, no, guys can't do performance enhancing drug because these records are are sacred. Really? Like, do your research. Go look at, like, articles and socialite articles about the parties that Babe Ruth was attending and all that shit that was going on. And the greenies that happened for dozens of years. Uh, people just taking amphetamines before the game. They called them greenies because calling them fucking meth was a little bit. Uh, that was uh, frowned upon a little it, bit. It was frowned upon <laughs> to, to, to just say I do meth before my baseball games. So <laughs> yeah, I called them some, greenies. You're like, hey, they, we're doing some fun greenies before the game. It's fun. Kids here, try some greenies. Yeah, we're going to all have a good time. I right. Get it. So for the history of baseball, it is it is it is it is mired with just drug abuse and, and enhancing drugs, the history of baseball. So to all of a sudden get uh, to the point where you're high and mighty about these guys in baseball, I think is disrespectful to the history of not only baseball, but it's representation of America. I mean, these well, guys used to smoke and, and drink beer in the dugout when we were kids. Here's the thing. And I agree with you hundred percent. Here's the other thing, just on a, I guess on a philosophical level, a big picture level on all this, you had mentioned something very key, especially in a game of skill. 
And I will compare it to say bodybuilding, right. And stuff like in world's strongest man, even though I still think that those guys should be able to juice too. Hey, you want to juice, you want to get the upper hand. Great. But you know what? Everybody else can do it too. So eventually it's going to come down to, you're going to fucking rip your bicep tendons while you're trying to do a crazy curl or your determination and your mind and your willpower and your fucking just your drive is going to make you the winner. But I guess you could make the argument that, you know, sports like baseball, basketball, just to be, that you're bigger and stronger. It's not going to make your skill better in every aspect. No, There's steroids that. will never help your jump shot. It, no, <laughs> it's, it's just slow. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, right. So I would argue not only do PEDs, like steroids and things like that make you better directly. It's like cause and effect. You take steroids, you're going to be better at this game. No, like you were just saying, you got to find the fat part of the bat every single time. You have to manipulate and really understand pitches and pitchers really well to, to even hit a fucking fastball or a curveball or, or a change up. You know what I mean? Dude, you've been in the batting cages before. You get in that badass one where they're throwing it like the, the machines throwing it like 80, 90 miles an hour. Super fucking hard to hit one of those balls. Of course, yeah. imagine one like, of those that has like eight inches of drop. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. no fucking way. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? So I would argue that the other thing is this again, taking it very high level baseball. And I understand they're out there playing a game. They're having a good time. They got to be safe and all that kind of shit. Baseball and professional sports is in general are here and they are perpetuating their existence because they entertain me and you. Joe Schmoes, the public, right? That's that's why they're here. Yeah, that's where the money. That's where the money comes from. So if we want to see fucking guys break records and crack fucking home runs that are a fucking thousand feet and like knock it out of two parks, I say let's go. Let's get out there. If these guys are willing to do it, these things can be dangerous for your health. If you want to forego that and waive your concern because you want to give us a good show and that's what we want to pay for, fucking a, let's fucking go. Let's do it, baby. Dude, these old historian traditionalist baseball hacks need to fucking die off like, like, like old politicians need to die off. Mm. We need new blood. We need new styles. Uh, the way that a Hall of Famer needs to be voted into baseball should be by the fucking fans in a popular vote. Yeah. Done. Just Or at least give us like 50% of that vote is from the fans. Well, we know who belongs in the Hall of Fame and who doesn't. And here's the other thing, Bob. I mean, I can, I'm trying to think of other arguments you could have, but if you just said, okay, and I'm going to take now um, football because there's more contact in football. If we were like, hey, you guys want to juice? Juice. Get out there and fucking juice. Juice all you fucking want. You die, it's on you. You know what I mean? That's just be safe about it. I mean, you've got all the money and resources and doctors and specialists and, and trainers to make sure you do this a safe way. So go out and juice. And then you'd say, uh, well, you know, that's not fair because I'm a guy that doesn't believe in juicing. Okay. Well, you're a well, guy that's going to finish second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, Hey, okay, that's totally fine, dude, but you can still participate in the NFL. Now, when you go up against another lineman, that's like an extra hundred pounds of muscle versus you. And you can't compete with that because you're not juicing. You've got to deal with the consequences, just like anything in life. So I hate to say it, but if it kind of like was open for everybody to do it. More people would openly do it. More people would probably openly not, but you know, what's going to be left standing, very entertaining plays for us. Sure. You might have a lot more decapitations and weird things going on when people get hit in football, but Hey man, ratings, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I would say this, um, I, I, I'm I just saw, kidding. I saw a post from a mutual friend of ours that was, uh, on, on the FB. We'll, we'll keep it an anonymous social media site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, the, 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 the FB. Uh, oh, I anyway. like that. I like that. <laughs> and, and he was up in arms out of nowhere too, out, out of context and everything about, well, Brady can't be considered the goat because he got caught cheating. And I would, just Oh, I know this. who you're talking about now. <laughs> I, I would oh, just yeah. say this as a actual, you know, former athlete, if you're not cheating in some respect, you don't care enough. You're not trying. Like, why are you playing the game if you're not willing to fucking cheat to win? Anything you can get away with. You see it in pitchers. You get a little bit of pine tar behind their ear. So when they fucking grip that ball, they get a little bit more movement on it. You see it in, in, in sports to where like, oh, well, I'm not doing PEDs or HGAs. Well, what are you doing? Well, this new thing that they don't test for. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're not cheating, right? But no. And so so the spoils go to the victors, right? So the guys with the most money that can mask it, that can cover it, they're still cheating. 
you're never going to get rid of that in sport. You can't fucking regulate that out. You can't regulate the competitiveness out of professional athletes. That's the very fucking reason that they're professional athletes is because that insane narcissistic fucking competitiveness that makes them great. You can't take cheating out. You'll never take it out. So I say, just fucking roll with it a little bit more. You don't have to be crazy where guys have like two biceps on one arm, but you Ooh. do need to <laughs> fucking I don't relax know. Relax a little bit. If guys want to smoke weed, like what's his name? Josh Gordon, right? Can't play sports anymore because he's got oh, a weed problem. Don't it's even get me started with that shit. Seventy percent of the country, but he got banned for performance enhancing drugs <laughs> in the NFL. Like, hey man, if you guys do what you got to do to maintain. You're the modern gladiators. You want to win, cheat a little bit. Hey, well, I've got a, I've got a retort to that. Not much of a retort, just a summary and a make and a takeaway for the kids. But before I get to that, you had mentioned <laughs> mentioned something that I thought was very important, and I just want to point this out as a PSA. Anybody out there that thinks smoking weed is going to make you better at your sport, I don't know what to tell you about that one. Or that doesn't give anybody an edge. You might be in a better headspace. You know what I mean? Because you like took a couple of tokes and you went out and played but there's no way in hell that they're going to have an edge on you athletically just because they, they like to smoke weed in their off time too. I don't even think Josh Gordon was like alleged to be like high during practice or a game. He just pissed dirty, which we know is the most unfair thing he in the weed. world. He's a potty. Yeah. He, he smokes weed and it happens to have the longest shelf life that sticks in your body. In my mind, that's the dirtiest trick God ever pulled on anybody is making the, the safest substance out there the one that it leaves the paper trail the longest in your bud's bloodstream but anybody that thinks weed is going to give people an edge are, are fucking retarded yeah that's right i said it and to summarize what you said before i gotta take a drink i think you should take a drink too because oh, I, I would but fuck oh that's too bad well here i'll drink i'll drink I'm a sad. little for you because i'm about to grab a beer I don't, I don't you, know. you heard it here first folks i'm gonna paraphrase what bob said if you're not cheating you're not a winner so fuck you. <laughs> End of story. That's right. That's almost a direct quote from our own Bobby West. Good job, Bob. I, I like the paraphrasing there. Um, I, I will tell you this uh, personal story. Let's dial it back 30 years, right? Oh, and, uh, wait, hold on. We're going back. There's like, we're like in a, hold on. We're like in a sit down pizza hut. Right, right. We've got like yeah, the no, no. I'm da a dude. I pre-gamed at Pizza Hut once. Oh fuck yeah, you did. Like, of course so, you did. So you went so to the I'm salad bar. Hold on, you went to the salad bar. You got like those red cups that you can see through. They're like translucent. And the cherry tomatoes oh, and yeah. the red and white cups because you know you got yourself a personal the, the beverage. Yeah, a personal pan pizza that came out it was like still sizzling and shit and everything. Like oh great, great. Okay, continue. So so wind it back to like 1995. Um, I'm playing varsity ball and I'm also a stoner. Right. Um, my the weed Bob, affected my dirty. grades. Yeah, uh, it didn't make me a better player, but I will tell you what it did do. Um, for for those that have never played pads football in an organized level, um, there's guys that are literally trying to put you in the hospital, even in practice, right? So so there's just there's crazy dudes. It takes some 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 level of craziness to play a a sport with that sort of violence and impact, right? Um, there's pads, but they, they don't help that much. Um, so, so what the weed does is when you get done with practice or after a brutal game, especially uh, the weed helps you like not think about that. You probably have a bruised kidney and was that blood in your piss? It might've been, but I'm going to smoke some more weed and just like check on it tomorrow. Cause I have practice in two days. <laughs> right. So I don't want to tell anyone cause they'll hold me out of the game and I've got to get my crazy ass back in there. So, so. I could understand from a player's level of how weed matters. And I know we're kind of skewing off topic from where we started here. Don't you worry. Don't you, but, you're doing great. And everybody's <laughs> with you. We're behind you, but it, it's a recovery tool, right? Oh, it's yeah, a, sure. it's a, it's a, get your mind away from the trauma that you just experienced out there on the field. Cause don't get it twisted. It is trauma when you're going across the middle to go catch a ball. And you know, there's like an all district fucking linebacker that might not be quite sane that is running around foaming at the mouth and shit. And he <laughs> probably is on something and you've been eyeing him the whole game and you know, he's coming for you and you hear the footsteps. You, you have that anticipated trauma. And then when he hits you and you hear something crack and you don't know what it was and then you hit the ground and it takes you a minute to get back up or, or wake back up. 
then you, you don't know unless you've experienced that kind of violence. It's glorified and we're used to it on the screen. We're used to seeing these professional athletes, even basketball, it's super violent, but it, they're so good at it. They make it look good, right? But it's not. It's very, very hard. Uh, these professional athletes are very, very hard. So if they want to take some substances to help with our entertainment and, and how they get over the process to keep performing, I say, let them look and do really, really what they want to do. I agree hundred percent. And, and I, I guess the reason why I wanted to highlight the marijuana thing is there's, there's a large faction of people. I know it's going to be rough for you, but to, to understand is what I'm saying. There's a large faction of people that have never smoked weed that literally buy into some of the, the movie theater type stuff they show when somebody smokes pot. Like they literally start freaking out, like kind of like, uh, but, 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 but what is it? Um, the propaganda the old... from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll go back, go back to like the 30s or whatever. Uh, Reefer Madness, you know, like yeah, those yeah. films where they got the guy smoking pot and all of a sudden he's like, he's like a crackhead on PCP, like freaking out and like throwing fucking like full pianos and shit. And you're like, that's not how it works, fellas. I just want to let everybody know you, you do. You smoke some weed, you chill out, helps you kind of recover, recuperate, get your mindset. But but you're absolutely right. It's definitely I think it should be prescribed for players, especially after a tough game or you know just I mean? or just people that are having yeah. a hard time coping with life. You know, I like when you open this up to the way bigger picture. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I had this so narrow talking about professional sports. You know, Scott, maybe we should just give it to everybody and kind of be like Oprah. You a joint, you a joint, you a joint. Give that guy in the corner a joint. We love that. Hey, Mansion Cinema, go ahead and get on that weed thing. He can't agree on anything else, but get that weed thing passed. Just make your investments. Everyone makes money. Everyone wins. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Well, and I, I did want to mention too, because, and then I think we can, we might be able to get away from baseball a little bit here, but I think again, going back to these fucking people that control who gets the recognition. Now, granted here, before I get into this last one here, some of these guys don't give two shits about being in the hall of fame. They've got their, they've got their, their, their records. They've got their money. They had their fun playing the game. Some of them just don't care. Like I'm not in the hall of fame. You know what? Fuck these guys anyways. And there's a really good point to that. Cause again, who are these people, sports reporters and such that are kind of like dictating who is and isn't recognized eternally for their accomplishments in professional sports. But something that keeps fucking ringing true to me, as we were talking about this earlier this week, and, and I know you see him, I keep seeing uh Caesar sports book uh, ads on the television MGM ads. Dude, well, this yeah. one, this one, this one literally has the entire Manning family, the the great looking crew that they are. Just a even pick. fucking Cooper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're they're in there, bro. And, and it's like, hey, we want you to get out there and 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 bet and gamble responsibly and blah 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 blah. You've got all these like Hall of Fame players now that are advocating and marketing for professional sports gambling, and here you have probably one of the best baseball players, not probably one of the baseball players that's ever put on a glove in Pete Rose. And he was caught gambling and has been fucking blackballed from the, you know, from, from, from the record books eternally had nothing to do with PEDs. That kind of shit really burns me, man. You know, top I mean? five player ever. Oh, like 100%. That, dude, that dude needs to be in the Hall of Fame, not even in the Hall of Fame. They need him as an ambassador and a face of their sport. And he's going to die. And then in 20 years, all these old fucks that vote are going to die off. Baseball's going to change. Pete Rose is going to go in posthumously. We're going to be all old as fuck. Thinking, they should have done that back in 1998. <laughs> Whoa, man, that got dark real quick. Apparently, everybody's going to die. Well, I know Bob's right, but hopefully not too soon, Pete. But no, seriously, and I got to give a shout out to Mick, Mr. Mike Lenz here. I know he's a Cincinnati guy, so I'm sure he... Mikey, go <laughs> yeah, baby, go Bengals, baby. And I'm sure he loves Pete Rose, too. But hey... Sweet, sweet transition there, because that really brings up what I wanted to talk about next. Now, when we thought about this, Bob, we probably saw arguably, maybe not even arguably the best playoff game in professional football history. And that's that's the uh, Cincinnati Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills. Woo! What a fucking game. Well, I mean, literally Cincinnati Bengals, but I get you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was that was good. This was good. I need I, I'm going to need something else soon here. But yeah, we got the Chiefs and the Bills. Fantastic. Um, but the reason I, I wanted to say that, you know, we, we were thinking about really diving in that one. But I'll tell you what, the AFC uh, championship game there. Um, not even close, dude. Not even close. 
that was that Bills Chief game was the best. It might even be like the one of the best football games I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of games, high school, college. I've seen a lot of games, but to to do like neither team lost that game. Only one team won. It well, and I'll tell you insane. what. It came down to it. Really came down to, and I and I agree. the The game itself was better for a spectator than any other game I've seen. And the only reason I like the Bengals game versus the Chiefs is because it was kind of like it was victory for Josh Allen too. You know what I mean? It's almost like Joe Burrow like gave him a call before the games. Like, hey man, did he hurt you? I got you, boo. Don't worry about this. We're gonna we're gonna take this motherfucker down, and we're gonna take him down in his house. So it was a sweet justice of a game for what I thought. I don't know, man, if you would have kept playing that game, I think the bills win that game, like triple quadruple overtime or something like that. I just don't think Josh Allen was going to lose that game. If he would have kept getting the ball in his fucking hands, because every time he got the ball, it was there. Now the chiefs did kind of keep up, you know, keep stride with them or what have you. But I think it was basically Josh Allen, not picking heads that really lost that game for them. Cause people are like, well, what could Josh Allen and the bills have done differently? Maybe play a little bit tighter defense on that last drive. Okay, that's arguable. So, so I would say this: oh, that Bills see. defense is great. They're they're really good. Um, the Chiefs are clicking on all cylinders, as were the Bills' offense and the Chiefs' offense too. There was no stopping either one of those offenses. Yeah, tough, I, I would say that the final few defensive calls at the end of regulation will cost them that game. They just cost him that game. Why would you not have just like four DBs lined up on Tyreek Hill and uh, and Kelsey and just doubling him in man coverage, like pressing him off the line? Just like you're not you're these guys aren't going to win the game. You can throw right. it to, you know, your other receivers, the back out of the backfield. They can beat us. But for damn sure, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey are going to get doubled off the line. They're not going to be in these plays. You're and absolutely they, right. They didn't do anything. They played soft preventy to avoid the no. touchdown and it cost them that whole game. So I wouldn't even say that <clears throat> giving up oh. the touchdown to Kelsey in overtime was the big play. That was pretty good coverage. That was a great yeah. throw. That was a great catch. There was a I, very small window that, that Mahomes put that in there. And it was almost a play that was reviewed and called back is how close it was from being like out of bounds. Great, great fucking play, but you're right to have the two best, almost, I could almost arguably the two best people in their position in the game of football right now, not double teamed at least. And that clutch of a position, like, for, you know, force, who's the other guy that's super, super fast to Michelle um, Hardman or something like that. Another, and know, there's Pringle. And yeah. Pringle force those guys to come up with the, the, the most ridiculous save. Don't let the two best players on your team and arguably the two best players at the wide receiver or wide, wide receiver and tight end positions in the game, arguably uh, don't let them be pretty much wide open to make this hundred percent. Bill yeah. Belichick wouldn't have let that go down. Oh Yeah. You're he absolutely wouldn't right. He wouldn't know. He makes no. you win games without your stars. No. That's his whole That's thing point. is that he takes away what you're good at and you have to like come up with big plays with things that you're not good at or with people that aren't used to making those plays. The difference between the Chiefs and Bills versus the Chiefs and the Bengals is that the, the Bills and the Chiefs were just one of the best slug fests we've ever seen in, in, in sports. Dude, this the emotions, was, the emotions were woo, 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 you you know, oh my God, it was, it was a horrible ping pong match of emotions in my head. I'll tell yeah, you that this right is now. Joe Frazier, Ali stuff. Like it no, was just it was toe good. to toe, pound for pound, just throwing blows right up until the end, until literally the rules dictated that no one got to throw another punch, you know? No. Uh, and, and that was so fantastic. Now, not to say that the the Bengals and the Chiefs AFC Championship might be the greatest AFC Championship we've ever seen. Um, it's a dandy. It was a dandy. And you know what, though? I will say this. I don't know if it's really Mahomes fucking up himself. I think those last two sacks and defensive plays by the Bengals to force them to, you know, to try the kick, right? That was masterful because that was one of the most frustrating things when the bills played the bill or excuse me, the bills played the chiefs is Mahomes like could, could eternally scramble and not yeah. get touched. It was so goddamn frustrating, <laughs> especially for myself, you, you, you as well. I know a lot of other people that wanted to see the, the chiefs get toppled and let Josh Allen and the bills get in there for a shot at it. But 
they were not getting any real pressure on him and neither were arguably neither were the Bengals until it was clutch. And then all of a sudden he made a stupid interception and I, what a lineman intercepted him, you know, and that was not a, a throw that normally Mahomes would do. And then the, the little scramble again, where you almost thought, Oh God, he's going to fucking scramble his way out of this one. But no, no, no. They fucking just kind of wedged him together and took him down. And that was kind of the end of that. That was, it was great. Yeah. So there's a couple of key things about the AFC championship and it had it all. Right. Really the Chiefs good. were up big at home. Mahomes is doing his thing. We're all like, fuck, here we go. The Chiefs are clicking. They're going to fucking win another Super Bowl. Right. 23 and or 21 to three at 21 to three. Oof. Right. And then so we had the Bengals score before half ended. Huge. 21 10. Yeah. Got it within big. 11. Right. But then the, the adjustments that were made at halftime. Andy Reid got out coached for the first time since mm. Bill Belichick met him. Right. So uh, he did. They came out there. They were flat almost until the end of the game. They scored three points in the second half of that game. Right. Uh, it was just ridiculous. And, and the Bengals had the comeback down by 18. The offense got moving. They got that momentum going. They shut the fucking crowd up. The defense started making plays. One of the best plays of that game, which goes kind of under the radar, is in the um, I think it was in overtime. Uh, there was a spy on on Patrick Mahomes. He was going to scramble. He had a million fucking years to throw the ball. But the spy decided, I'm not going to wait for him. I'm just going to go get that fucker. And he just beelined it towards him, right? Made the sack. Gave him no choice. Nowhere to go. He was running full steam. Sacked him. It essentially caused this crazy shift in the, the yards. They're always talking about... Um, being behind the chains that put the the chiefs behind the chains. And then it just kind of changed the game from that point on the sandwich sack. Like you saw the, the defensive pick. And then mm -hmm. at the very end, the, the defense just making that play right in between uh, Tyree's hands, boom, knocked it up, picked. And then as soon as that pick happened, we all knew it was. Mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. No, that was, it was glorious too, because especially with that kicker. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, um, that was, yeah, that was a really, really fun game. And again, it was kind of like, it was, um, it was justice, right. For the bills, I think to, to a large extent I do. And I don't think I'm alone here, but I, I do think that the bills are the better team versus the chiefs. I just, I just think, yeah, I, think I just so think, I just think so. And I just think they were a little too late, you know, a little too late kind of thing to the game. And in the sense where, we talked about this prior. It was like kind of whoever was going to have the ball last was going to be the winner, right? That's exactly what happened with the chiefs um, versus the bills. And I, I want to say this because um, I, I really believe it. I think that because they would have had to go to Buffalo too. If the bills would have win, I think we're looking at the Buffalo bills being in the super bowl since the first time, since they lost four times in a row to, to the Cowboys, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it would have, it, it, it's a bunch of what ifs, obviously I'm not taking anything away from the Bengals. They, they did a fantastic job. And that's the other thing I got to say, Joe Burrow is a younger quarterback than Mahomes and Josh Allen. He has less experience in both of them. What is he a third year? I want to say like barely. Um, yeah. He's, yeah. It's just yeah, like yeah he's, he's a third year on a team that a couple of years ago only got like two wins. You know what I mean? And here he is just like with ice in his veins in the most important games as a professional football player. I mean, his nicknames fit him. You know what I mean? Joe Burr is, is just that he's, he's cold as ice, man. So very happy for the guy. I will tell you this too. I, I really, as we're coming down to it now, Bob, and, and I loved watching fucking uh, Jimmy G fucking get get hammered at the end and do let's he face it yes. he jimmy g did <laughs> he did you know, it's so funny because i got a couple of texts too and they're like oh my god jimmy garoppolo is horrible i was like oh yeah no i know this is how he normally does in clutch situations this is finally now his defense and the other players on his offense didn't kind of overshadow how mediocre of a quarterback he is at the end of the day compared to these other guys in the contest right josh allen at the, like let's take the We'll take the four horsemen, so to speak. You know, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and Jimmy. and then this guy, <laughs> and then Jimmy G over there drinking slow gin. <laughs> no, but seriously, 
<laughs> hey, seriously. dude, take off your gold chain. You're not going to win this game. No, no. And 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 again, I I tease Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he's already got more Super Bowl rings than than a couple of these guys, I think, that are going for it right now because, again, he kind of fell ass backwards into them, right? Wasn't he on the Patriots when they got a Super Bowl ring? Um, so there is that. But right now, I really am pulling for the Bengals to win it all. I think it would be the ultimate, like, you know, Swans, like kind of just the ultimate underdog kind of story. But I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, Bob, with, with that because I really want Stafford to get a ring. But I'll tell you what, when I put these teams together and I know it's going to be in Los Angeles, but technically the Rams are the St. Louis Rams for the longest time. So I don't really think they, they have the home field advantage, say, of another team that's been established for a long time and their city, respectively. And the Rams are fantastic, but man, they made some really silly, just horrible bumbles and fuck ups in the past two games against the 49ers and especially against Tampa Bay when they should have had that game sealed up. I know they were playing the greatest of all time in Tom Brady, but still they kind of almost let that game slip away with them, which is silly fucking mistakes, you know, hiking the ball over his fucking head when he's not looking just like this really dumb shit, a couple of fumbles that were just like horrible timing and shit. So I know, I really think that it's possible for the Bengals to walk away with, um, with the title this year i mean well i'm gonna say this that um i think it's very fortunate that the rams uh, with matt stafford are playing the Bengals, because for me either way i win this year exactly either way if the Bengals win uh, i'll love it and if if matt stafford wins he deserves it he did 12 years in detroit and and that's like getting out of San Quentin. Dude. I, was, I was just about to say the way you said that sounds like a horrible prison. Stand. He's like, yeah, you know, I just did 12 years in Detroit. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry about that. How was the food? <laughs> like, you know, For I mean? real. For real. But you're making a great point. I talked about it the other day, too. And I think we did, too. It's like no matter who wins, I'm not going to be upset either way. I think fair way to say it. After I start, I may lean one way or the other. I just don't know yet if I'm going to go more for the Bengals or for the Rams just for the sake of kind of rooting for somebody. But I'm pretty sure that no matter how it comes out at the end of the day, who's on top, I'm going to be happy for them. But I'm just saying, I'm saying, Bob, right now on air, I think the Bengals could uh, be sneaky and just take it away 100%. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, th- those two teams seem really even. Um, both teams kind of have their their thing. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily. It's hard for me to say that uh, Cooper Cup and and Matt Stafford aren't going to pull another late game heroic out of them because Cooper Cup's just fucking fantastic. Uh, he's and, dude. He's the best all around receiver we've seen in a long time, and to do that at his undersized stature is pretty incredible what he's doing well how about obj too finally found a home for himself too to have that as your number two with cooper cup as your number one wow that's um that's pretty badass and know, it especially. seems like he's accepted that role oh right? he's embraced it I, yeah you know what's crazy is the narrative has always been that he's a he's a cocky asshole he's a horrible teammate he can't be worked with and as soon as he gets to the ram because he's probably not stupid i'm sure he's always like you know what? i think we can win a championship with the team we got here i think he fell right in place and said you know what i'm going to be a team player and help this team win and that's exactly what he showed especially in the playoffs here because i mean let's face it he only got there what like mid-season he was mid-season, playing for the Bra- yeah. yeah he was playing for the browns for half the season but i think he's I think he's fell right into place as a key, key part to that. And he had over a hundred yards and like nine catches in this last game. You it must I mean? be nice knowing that the other team can never double team you. Yeah. Ever. You know, seriously. Like you just can't. You're going to leave Cooper by himself. No, you're going to, you're going to have a safety helping that guy at all times. And if that's the case and they try to, you're going to leave Tyler Higby wide open and he's a badass tight end. He was injured in the last game, but I think he's questionable for the Super Bowl. We'll, well it sounds like we have our Super Bowl special. Um, we still have a couple more topics. I just, we don't have any time to get to them. Yeah, we've got a little bit of time. Now, last week, I, I cut us short. I gave us blue balls a little bit here when I could have let you finish. I'm never going to do that again, okay? Because I know you can take it, and I know you want some release. So I'm going to leave it to you here for how you want to finish out the episode here. What kind of conversation does Bob want to have here? Do we want to go serious? Or do we want to be a little bit more lighthearted? I think that's really the decision you need to make, Bob, because I am with you 100% for whatever you want to do. You got my full support, buddy. Well, I think we got to talk about what's going on in Ukraine. 
Okay. Mother Russia and Ukraine. Here we go, baby. Well, and I'll tell you what here, man. I mean, you've, you've, you've seen it a lot on the news. It's on the news every day right now. There's actually some interesting stuff about China right now as we rapidly. China. China, the, the 2022 uh, Winter Olympics that will be starting in a couple of days. But this is an interesting one. I was talking about it with Jamie the other day, or maybe it was last week. I'm not sure. And we talked about it. It's kind of one of those things where it seems to me all of the allied partners, they, they all of them need to do something. If it's not for the greater good of humanity, they need to do for maybe their own gaffes and blunders in their country in recent history is kind of one thing, one, one kind of thought that I had. But, and, and then you also don't want to let Vladimir Putin and Russia like play Hitler part two. You know what I mean? Of, 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 of Europe, especially. But at the same time, you don't want to start a lot of conflict and drive these countries into war. I don't think anybody's prepared for war or wants war. But here we are, Bob. I mean, what are your thoughts? I don't know, man. I, I, I kind of happiness. I, I think that Putin's putting himself into a position in a point of no return. Yeah. Um, I think with his ego and where he is with everything and the way that he's positioned um, his soldiers around Ukraine and the way that he spent, let's just be honest, billions of dollars uh, to the logistics of that is insane. So to say that that's a training exercise is an obvious farce. Um, so he's obviously planning the invasion. Uh, the thing that you have is that the, the, the second leading nuclear power in the world, right? And we're the first. Um, and, and it's really just us and Russia. And then it's 1B. Right. And China has a lot, too, but nothing compared to us in Russia. And all you need is like a dozen on each side. And we have thousands, tens of thousands of nuclear warheads. So um, I, I really think that Russia is trying to see what what everyone's response is going to be in the world. No one has the nukes behind him. And uh, I think he's putting everyone in the position to test everyone's metal. You want to get into this now? I I, I would hope that this wouldn't lead to any sort of nuclear war because everyone knows that that's, that's a fallacy. If you start a nuclear war, we all die. We all lose. There is no world to run a- after the war no, is over. Everyone's like, done. It's like, it's like the cold war in general. It never happened because it's a domino effect of death. Like that's it. That's yeah, what that is. There's no world to have after yeah. that. So uh, I, I, I would, I would hope that that would never happen. Uh, but I do. I do think that there's going to be a war over there. Uh, I just don't know how it's avoided at this point. So, I mean, right now it looks like everyone's putting their troops um, kind of around Ukraine as far as NATO goes, because they're not letting, for those that don't know, Ukraine's not part of NATO. Like Ukraine has to ask to be a part of NATO. And they want to be. They haven't asked. They haven't actually asked. Yeah. Well, right. and, and well, Russia doesn't want them to be. Of course that, not. That's no. for damn sure. You know what I mean? In fact, Russia doesn't even want a Ukraine. They want them to be part of Russia again. Um, well, tactically, it's a huge chunk of land mm-hmm. and uh, it's right there on the sea. So they have access uh, to their Navy right there, which they already took with Crimea, but they would have much more. And Ukraine is like one of the top five largest bodies of land in Eurasia. They also have a, a shitload of oil reserves there, too. And also, there's a lot of transportation for Russia's goods that would definitely benefit from being able to continue to go through Ukraine with as little of friction as possible. There's a lot of economics to this for, for Russia, too, and the rest of, I mean, Eastern Europe. Of course, they don't want it just because. No, I mean, that, you know, <laughs> they, they're like, you know, you guys cannot have like your own country anymore. You're Russians. We're all Russians. I mean, just seriously, give up all your traditions and your bullshit. Just come on back. Come on back. I swear. It's like it's like an abusive like uh, husband or, or wife or something like that that used to beat the shit out of you. You know what I mean? And they're trying to get you back. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel Russia's being right now with Ukraine. And now they're refusing. They don't want to come back. So now they're getting a little bit nasty on the phone and lining up a hundred thousand troops on the border. You know what I mean? Cause that works plan B. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I know that like, if you, if you watch the media, everyone's trying to play it Republican V Democrat. And I don't think Putin really gives a fuck who's in charge over here. This has been his plan for a long time. He didn't really care. Um, uh, he, he, he wants that land and he wants to see if anyone dares to stop it. All right. Uh, and, and I think, I think no matter what, 
I think he's going to try to take it. I'll, I'll be, I just do. I'll be honest with you here. I, we talked about this too, Bob, and my mind kind of goes back and forth a little bit where, where did he really have more leeway with the United States with Trump who seemed to have pretty good report. The guy, especially depending on who you're talking to on what news source, I mean, shit, he was in bed with Putin. If you turned on, you know, CNN, um, but he also didn't take a lot of shit. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, to anybody globally, there was that kind of narrative in that, that facade he had, but there's also a change in the guard. And I think more than who the leader is of the United States, it does seem like no matter what, we do not have our fucking shit together, Bob. And I think that's something. And I think we talked about that too, that mentally our country, like if it has a mental state is definitely weakened right now, just because we're concerning ourselves with so much division right now, it seems from the outside in, and there's definitely some credit to this, that we don't have our shit together. You know what I mean? So maybe that's maybe the 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 uh, the cause for okay, let's go now. You know what I mean? I I don't know, but it it definitely is happening right now, and that's what I was saying earlier. I, I don't know what the response should be besides we can't let him do whatever he wants. If they're not a NATO member, but you had made a great point too when we were talking offline that if we had a bunch of troops there and so did other allies, and he strikes, well, that's all out war, right? That's like a declaration of war, so to speak. So that gives us credit or, 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 uh, you know, that gives us the, uh, that would be our Lusitania. Right. 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 But- if we had like 5,000 troops and then an attack happened on a base that we had people in Ukraine, then it would yeah. be like, well, they attacked Americans and then we'd be yeah. in. And, and that justifies, the- it justifies us to use all the extreme, you know, um, re- repercussions and, and whatever we want to do with all of our allies. But again, where does that leave us after that? Like, again, like you were saying too, does that put us in a potential nuclear uh, standoff like we already kind of are I, I we're kind of getting to a a colder cold war right now you know what i mean it's well, like we're getting into a hot war yeah well I, yeah i'm saying almost like the cold war never really went away it just got a little bit colder it kind of like it just kind of got iced over a little bit um you know it's that goddamn global warming bob you know what i mean <laughs> and and you know i i, I really i find myself uh you know, split, right? Because nobody wants war. Nobody wants war with a superpower, right? That sounds like a forever war, but like Afghanistan wasn't, right? But um, war, you know, right there. But at the same time, I'm an '80s kid. I grew up under Reagan and fuck the Ruskies. So I'm still of the fuck the Ruskies attitude, where fuck that guy, <laughs> fuck the Russians. Hey. Uh, it's where uh, we came from, baby. You, you know heard it I mean? here first. Fuck the <laughs> Russians. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Summing up this episode, Bob says, if you're not cheating, you're not a winner, and fuck the Russians. Let's go, Beijing 2022. <laughs> I mean, pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, so I, I like that. I like that. I mean, if we're going to have to go to war, um, I don't want my grandkids speaking Russian. So, I mean, it seems like, like a noble adversary to at least go to war with we're not just running in there picking apart afghanistan's for oil <laughs> yeah because, we need to go to because we needed a reason to be in iraq <laughs> yeah we need to go to ukraine and russia to fuck them up make sure we got some oil too because we've already fucked up everything in the middle east um, but you know in all seriousness though i'm interested to see how this plays out because regardless of where you are who you are this is going to affect everybody greatly everyone so. needs to pay attention to this this they isn't really just do. like news stories from Fox or CNN or whoever. This is like you really need to fucking pay attention to what's happening right now because this is how world wars start. Yeah. And th- this is it. This is how it happens. I mean, literally, I don't know. I'm, again, I'm not balls deep in all the connections, but I could literally see the allies, you know, going their way and having what we could have very easily Russia, North Korea, China band Perhaps. together too. Yeah, you know? and there's a couple of closer countries with Cuba, and Venezuela, which and, which in their own forces aren't much, but in their strategic positioning, oh, they're great. In the planet, they're they're very good locations, dude. Like, you know, Cuba can get the binoculars on us. You know what I mean? And that's no good either. We don't want that. Um, well, that's interesting too because that together we have we have people right now battling, especially uh, with. Um, with partisan politics like ah dude russia's not not in any concern it's china we got to focus on and, blah, 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 and vice versa dude if they work together with how strong and how 
just impactful the Chinese economy is and all the things that are made in China. And then on top, on top, on top of that, Russia has one of what, besides us, I believe like they spend the most money on their military or maybe even more, I think I was reading. You know, you combine those couple of things right there and we've got a worthy adversary to say the least. Yeah, this, you know isn't, I mean? this isn't a joke and this isn't politics. There's troops on the border of a sovereign nation that's pretty important in, in the continent over there. Um, this is a big deal. This isn't just like Russia's like, you know, wanting to come in and, and, and start a war with Georgia. You know, this is now like an ally of the U.S. They're not NATO, but they are an ally, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's very intense what's happening right now. And it's something that I try to keep a tab on like every day to see what's happening over there because uh, this could very well affect everyone. I mean, I've got a 15-year-old kid and I don't, I don't want him having to get drafted and go fight into an active battle with Russia in, you know, two and a half years, not knowing, wow. his, you know, his fucking that could be from a, his ass. I mean, uh, that could be a very real thing, too, with the timeline and how old he is and, 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 and essentially an entire generation of kids that um, I think we may know we weren't really there. But the last time this happened kind of fucked up a lot of kids, a lot of people. You know what I mean? And, and it's I'm like sure every hundred years, there's a, a global conflict. Yeah right mm -hmm. so um i mean we're kind of due for one as sad as that is to say i mean i hope this isn't it yeah i mean i'd rather bob kind of you know switching gears a little bit in the sense of keeping it a little bit lighthearted i'd rather be due for some anal sex than all out war you know what i mean it sounds way more feasible something i can get behind bob 100 percent, and i know you can get behind too or in front <laughs> You're, you're whatever dude i'm flexible in more ways than one you know what i'm saying oh my goodness kids well seriously pay attention to what's going on there not just what's going on in football um not not what's going on here um you know with us even though i really appreciate that you guys are so tuned in to everything going on here at the stiff truth uh check things out and i'll tell you what bob you know i just giving people another psa here when i was doing research on what's going on with russia and ukraine I enjoyed reading articles from here at Al Jazeera, BBC, a couple other ones, NPR, but I stayed away from the uh, NBC, CNN, Fox, you know, uh, publications that were out there. And I, and I suggest people do the same. I know that they are probably biased too, but they've got an un-American bias, which can be very refreshing for us actually standing, understanding what's going on around the globe because we really don't get a very clear lens when we go through our media sources for a lot of this shit no 100 percent. and there's other news agencies outside of america there yeah. is there really <laughs> is guys believe it or not there's there's more things on in prime time besides tucker carlson and who's on the other one out used to be cuomo live but <laughs> not anymore you know what i mean <laughs> oh i don't even know i don't even know who who fills that time slot anymore oh my goodness bob well i'll tell you what we are pretty much out of time here i think we got our our our, our we got you up against the wall you know what i'm saying i'm lifting your comfortably, leg up comfortably comfortably yes so comfortable you don't even want to move but um I will tell you this, guys, I'm going to go ahead and drop this. We didn't get to talk about it today, but tune in next week. We're going to be talking about some fun shit. We're going to have more things to say than just this, but we're also going to be diving into something that both me and Bob are fantastic at, and we've got a lot of experience. That's the joys of day drinking. It's so we're excited for that one. That's right, baby. Very excited about that one. But Bobby, take us away, man. Well, thank you so much for tuning in on this special Tuesday night. Woo! Uh, uh, again, it's always a pleasure to have you listening. Uh, I am Bob West. Uh, like us on Spotify. Uh, watch us on YouTube. Spread the word. We are the Stiff Truth. I'm with Scott Castelnova. This has been great. What a great conversation, Scott. Absolutely. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care. See ya.